Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about the third book in the Charlie Parker series, John Connolly's The Killing Kind. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to start doing this because I, I've gotten a lot of comments throughout the years. Uh, what, two years? <laughs> I've been here two years. Anyways, I've gotten a lot of comments o over the months. <laughs> I'm already giggling. Uh-oh. But uh, I've gotten a lot of comments that say, hey, you never talk about what the book is about. You only talk about what you like. I am a firm believer that if you want to know what a book is about, you, uh, you got to do is check out the description. Um, and anything beyond that, I feel, is spoiler territory, so I kind of stay away from it. But I am going to read the back cover copy on this. Uh, so, when the discovery of a mass grave in northern Maine reveals the grim truth behind the disappearance of a religious community, Charlie Parker is drawn into vicious conflict with a group of zealots intent on tracking down a relic that could link them to the slaughter. Haunted by the ghost of a small boy and tormented by the demonic killer known as Mr. Pud, Parker is forced to fight for his lover, his friends, and his very soul. Alright, um, so... Let's talk about Mr. Pud just really, really quick. Mr. Pud preceded himself. I guess that's the way. He, he had a reputation long before I ever really got into this series. One of the very first things that I heard about uh, when I heard about the Charlie Parker series about John Connolly was Mr. Pud. Everybody, I, even on Twitter, um, if I guess I could dig around for it, but Keelan Patrick Burke popped up and said Mr. Pud is terrifying. All throughout my, my book community, uh, not career but my time in the book community on Goodreads I have heard about Mr. Pud I think I even heard about Mr. Pud before I even realized that he was a character in a book uh, the name always struck me funny Pud uh, it just doesn't sound creepy but holy shit <laughs> this, uh, this is one character that is going to stay with me for a while and Connolly did a terrific job describing this character's fingers that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not going to go into any more detail about him because I had no idea. No one told me what Mr. Pud's M.O. was. Modus operandi. Nobody told me uh, what that was. And when I got in here, I, just, it, um, I had to put the book down. The, very, the prologue made me put the book down. Um, it bothered me uh, a lot. And if you get in there, it's... it's one of two of my greatest fears. Like, I have two fears, and it is tied with the other one. So if you know me personally, you can probably puzzle that out yourself. The book itself, this one stands alone a lot less than uh, book one and book two. Book two didn't really harken back to book one all that much, but this one certainly does. And once again, I'm already halfway through the next book in the series, so I'm going to go ahead and say this is not a standalone series whatsoever. Especially, <coughs> excuse me, especially not when you get, by the time you get to book four. I don't know who in their right mind would have told me... <laughs> I'm picking. I don't know who in their right mind would have told me that, this, that the books could be read as standalones. I guess some people were just trying to help me out um, because I only, at the time I only had books... 16 and 17 in the series in my possession. I now am only missing three of them just in the past month I've went out and grabbed them because I'm going through these books one a week. I know I didn't post uh, any uh, Connolly reviews last week but that's because I had so much to get out. I had, uh, what was it, David Joy, I had uh, buh, 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 Shirley Jackson, I had, I had a bunch of stuff to get out and I only have three days for review and I take the weekends off. I'm trying to give myself that break. But uh, with this one, this is this is my favorite in the series so far. Um, I see it's really hard. As quickly as I'm reading this, it's really hard to talk not to talk about what I'm reading right now. Um, but looking back in this one, this book had a great effect on me. Um, I think, but I honestly believe that I could have skipped right over book two and not hurt. Uh, my chances of understanding the series. Um, it it seemed. I, the only thing I can say is the same thing I said in the Dark Hollow review was it felt like a sophomore effort. It felt like a second book in the series is, and that's perfect. Um, what this one does, this does not feel like the third book in a series. This feels like the series has just gained its ground. Like it has finally decided what it's going to be. It's leaving you know other 
other possibilities of where it might have gone in, in its dust, and it is veering off into a place that I certainly, definitely want to see the outcome of. Um, and I'm saying this as someone, like I said, who is halfway through book four and will be probably be halfway through book five by the time I talk about book four. But it's also a testament to how good this series is, how I'm burning through it. I read this one in three or four days. I read the first one in three days, the second one in four days. This one, um, I think three or four days. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I did take, I think, two days off right in the middle of it um, after reading the prologue. I know, I know, I just... It, I was I was triggered. I was honestly, I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but that, it, it triggered. And it took a lot for me to read some other scenes in the book. Um, but uh, another thing, going back to it, Angel and Lewis are fantastic. Uh, I had, I have quotes, oh, sorry, uh, quotes back here that just say dialogue. Um, and I wanted to read them to you. I wanted to get into it, and I wanted to be like, I want. I was even planning on doing like a little skit going back and forth between Angel and Lewis, but I don't want to spoil these things for you. Um, so, but just know if you find a mass market paperback copy of this book, the dialogue that I'm talking about is on pages 162. It's hilarious. The, these two characters are amazing when they're talking to Charlie, just when they're talking in general. And page 251. I am hyped extremely hyped to get to book seven in the series which is called the reapers it is a book from what i understand it is a book set uh, it that especially i can't talk today it is a book especially from uh, angel and lewis's uh, point of views i want to get to that book very very soon which is another reason why i'm burning through it i burned through the first two to get to this one because it had such a high reputation and it did not let me down. So yeah, this is my favorite in the series right now. Have you read The Killing Kind by John Connolly? If you have, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!